on chapter 9 we will talk about uh, about the closing the final step of our uh, <coughs> real estate transaction which will cover like a title escrow procedures and uh, uh, federal law we call RESPA for the everything about the disclosure requirement including the advertisement and all the fee charge to the buyer and last part we will talk about uh, real estate investment and investment for sure is not for <laughs> your primary resident residential stuff is more considered as uh, income property or commercial property. So we have uh, <coughs> uh, so-called cost recovery versus of the capital gain. Okay, <clears throat> uh, sec page 48, section 9.1 for the closing. Uh, generally, it was <clears throat> involving person of like a uh, escrow a uh, holder or officer and the buyer side from buyer side set aside and or the uh, <coughs> salesperson or uh, broker that can be uh, <coughs> in the close, closing uh, process then. And then uh, the next important is the public record. Once uh, the deal is done, it's closing then uh, <clears throat> by law. Okay, if you're using uh, escrow services, then uh, they have to record it. Otherwise, it will be <clears throat> the broker's uh, responsibility to record it. And the recording gives a public notice. Okay. And of course, the public record is open to the public. Everybody can check it out. Once you record it, it serves as a constructive notice. Okay. Um, <laughs> constructive notice, it sounds like uh, similar to. Uh, in the states, you know, uh, once you get married, you will wear a ring. Okay, the ring. Once you wear the ring, okay, it not, It acts as you give a constructive notice. So people who see somebody wear a ring, then they know uh, he or she get married. So the public record, once you record it, the, f the function is the same. Anybody who check it out, see the public record, then they know who is the owner. That's called constructive notice. Okay, and uh, quick hint for the exam. Uh, <coughs> related to the closing, uh, fairly important stuff we call TDS. Uh, on chapter 10, we'll talk about that again. Uh, TDS, uh, Transaction Disclosure uh, <coughs> Statement. Okay. Uh, it is the seller. Seller should provide it to fill out the form. Uh, 
everything anything regarding about this property the uh, water leaking or something damaged <clears throat> related to the property you should disclose by the seller okay and the form should be filled out only by the seller we will talk about that in chapter 10 again okay anyway california we require the seller has to provide this tds before the closing by mail is five day okay and also remember that once the buyer receives the tds they have a right to rescind rescission they can cancel this contract and get the earnest money back so it is not a good idea that uh, you give it out <coughs> before the closing okay there's another uh, way people do in California because uh, being a salesperson okay other than the license fee insurance you know real estate board the fee any fee you know each day you you took a buyer out uh, your car expenses, your you know, uh, social fee, gas, it costs you a lot of money. And uh, real estate transaction, it takes a long time to do it. Okay, even you had a deal signed, the offer was confirmed and signed, we started to open escrow in California it might take up to 45 days or even more if there's a <clears throat> if not if not you know for example the uh, mortgage if it that that doesn't go through uh, smoothly then it, it probably <clears throat> end up with two months so instead of wasting all those time and money okay some people doing the other way Okay, before uh, before the buyer want to make an offer, that the seller provide the TDS first, or before <coughs> uh, enter open escrow. Okay, that the buyer see the TDS first. You know before we continue, otherwise it might just wasting all those two months and for nothing you know, wasting of the time and money okay that, that's the other way in real life some people would like to do that uh, <clears throat> however in other states such as Nevada Nevada they Nevada law asks you to a uh, seller has to provide uh, before the closing, 10 days before the closing. That's uh, more sounds like uh, practical and reasonable because we don't want to wait until the last day. You know, until last day, the buyer can always say, oh, uh, this TDS is not good. Uh, I want to cancel the order. I want to cancel the contra contract then. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so okay before closing we have so-called final inspection this inspection is not a uh, professional tray inspection like my friend Paul New who has a flying drone you know they, <clears throat> they can check out the roofing uh, this final inspection more uh, we also call so called walkthrough. Okay, you walking your customer through the <clears throat> the whole property. You know, more like a visual inspection to see uh, <clears throat> if the wall is okay, the painting is okay, the door window is okay, and the air condition is working fine. Those type of visual inspection in terms of the ownership title the washer means 
to make sure who is in possession of the property. Okay, that we talk talk about earlier uh, in chapter six. Uh, there's an exam question: if somebody failed to record in the title, and if you <coughs> did not uh, go inspect the property, make sure who is the owner, who or is there somebody, some tenant there. Okay, that's the in terms of a title ownership. <coughs> The meaning of walkthrough. So what I'm saying is, it's not only just visual inspection to see if, if there's a broken window stuff. I would say broken window is kind of like a minor stuff. It's not really that big deal. Okay, survey for sure. Survey we will do survey to make sure the location and the sizes. The see if the fence has been installed uh, on the property line without the encroachment stuff. Okay, again, attendant, like I say, can be, you know, buyer, seller, you know, real estate salesperson, broker, or the <clears throat> lender, title company, escrow. Okay, closing in escrow, um, the escrow services, which in terms of they were a uh, disinterested third party, okay, we let the third party, which most likely is the <coughs> escrow company. In Southern California, the title company and the escrow uh, <coughs> company was separate. And Northern California and stay like in Nevada. Okay, escrow company belong to the title company. Okay, that's something you, <clears throat> you may want to know. Okay, but anyway, there were this interest third party. Okay, they are neutral. In the neutral, they do everything. They follow the instruction or the contract or the, by law. Okay, uh, in, the, in cases of some dispute, Okay, escrow company, they are not charged, okay? They can do nothing for either side, okay? Okay, <clears throat> if no dispute, they follow the contract, they follow escrow instruction, okay? Uh, normally that was <coughs> uh, signed by both of the party, uh, buyer and seller agreement. If there's a dispute, they can do nothing, okay? So <clears throat> they can only wait until the core order or the core judgment. So that's this interest third party. So escrow agent, uh, like I say, in Southern California is an escrow company. Uh, in in New York, uh, <clears throat> most likely they they were in the attorney office or, or some other state is a title company. Okay. Okay. Also, one one thing is fairly important in California. Once we open escrow, which is uh, uh, the seller signs the offer, accept the offer, if they get a copy, then <coughs> we call MMM. Uh, MMM also stands for like meeting of the mind, which means uh, in real life, we open escrow, okay? get all the document, everything to the escrow office. Once MMM, uh, the buyer has three business days to transfer the required fund, okay, to the escrow trust account. Okay, other than that, just give you some more information about uh, uh, during we, before the closing, 
there's a one there's a, actually a lot of thing to do um, the most important thing we call contingency okay before closing the buyer has to remove the contingency okay other than that generally we have inspection we have pest control or in California we do a lot of the termite report okay and of course then you also have uh, mortgage stuff or and or other like a sales contingency <clears throat> and finally it, before the closing you have to fill out a removal of contingency by the buyer so so the closing can be done accordingly so that uh, all this is give you a rough uh, reference in New York they have structure inspection pass inspection rhythm percolation uh, uh, test for the uh, in, in particular <laughs> in the area that is still using the uh, septic tank in the countryside you know in the farm in the countryside in the hillside if they don't have the drainage system okay soil test and water uh, test it's more uh, in <coughs> more in commercial property they do more of this type or the new development okay anyway then final inspection or so-called walkthrough okay that's a general of the closing <laughs> Okay, next we have title procedures. Okay, in title procedures, for the seller, seller has to provide so-called abstract title um, and or a title commitment. Okay, abstract title is something uh, the old way, in the old day, there's a person who go to uh, <clears throat> county to uh, write down everything about this title the person called abstractor so in the old way they call abstract title and or the title commitment a commitment okay a commitment uh, is similar to like a lady ask a man for commitment right but the title commitment uh, kind of similar but uh, it has to be uh, written down as a, in the paper right? and why we need a seller you know give you commitment give you a title commitment because we say during the open open escrow until closing it, it lasts him for 45 days even more during the 45 day everything can happen in, <clears throat> for example in real life uh, a lot of parents they transfer their property I mean uh, most likely a rich, richer uh, parent they transfer their uh, <clears throat> real estate property to their kids okay so there's the one thing happened in real life the a lady talked to the title company that she don't like uh, her, his uh, her kids uh, girlfriend fiance or girlfriend whatever okay so she decided to take the title back okay then 
she went to the title company and asked for it. Okay, so uh, the title lady, uh, then the next day, uh, next Monday, they call the kids. Okay, title company, uh, like I mentioned earlier, there's uh, two important things they has to do twice, okay, once in the open escrow, once another time before closing. They have to ask, uh, are you, <coughs> are you uh, <coughs> year 18 years old? Okay, and the second one is, are you married? or single. Okay, so the kids tell the title lady, say, well, I'm married. So the, the, the title lady gets surprised. So they, uh, I saw, I told, <coughs> was it your mother last Friday or Thursday? She told me that you, you are single, you have a girlfriend. And so the kids say, oh, I'm sorry, uh, we <clears throat> we went to Las Vegas, we got married last, last Saturday. You know, in Las Ve Vegas, they have driving service, drive through service for marriage. Okay, but anyway, uh, that's a real thing uh, happened uh, <clears throat> a lot of time. And or there's a lot of things happen, something like before closing, uh, why the title or escrow office that they have to ask you again, are you married or why <clears throat> they have to write this commitment because a lot of things can be happen. You know, before closing, if you do not pay child support, your ex-wife or uh, whatever, ladies, they will file some judgment against you. Then the title company, they cannot close in the deal. So that's, okay, that's, <coughs> everything tell you why we need a commitment from the seller. Uh, before closing, that means seller, write it down. Okay, I promise I did not file bankruptcy. I did not get divorced or get married or, you know, anything. There's not, nothing uh, really hurts the title. I, I write it down, this commitment. <clears throat> okay, after title itself, it's not a strong title evidence. So number two, the attorney. In the old day, attorney has to examine the abstract title and give a opinion of the title. So, so uh, this opinion of title is disclosed all kinds of lien, encumbrances, easement, uh, anything, anything related, recorded on the title that affects the transaction. And it can be restriction. When we say restriction, most likely is CCNR, the HOA related stuff, condition and restriction. That's the CCNR. Okay, then on closing day, okay, they will do uh, the public record search. There's two public record search. Okay, that's the one the seller was, uh, because uh, seller's title is paid by the seller. Or we call owner's policy. If we purchase the title insurance, then we call owner's policy. Okay, in general, a seller will pay for it. Why seller pay for it is something related to uh, chapter A we, we have talked about. Uh, seller wanna prove this is a merchantable title. 
and I already <coughs> uh, compared to you play cards with your friend, right? You give out the last uh, <coughs> important one, last last card. The last card is in order to force your friend to open and see the result. It is same thing. Okay, in our uh, real estate transaction, the seller purchased a owner's policy for the buyer in order to force the buyer to close in the deal. Okay, that's the same thing. Just exactly the same as you play in the cards. Okay, then there's another bring down search. Uh, actually, <clears throat> uh, on the next page, we will also call as a lender's policy. When buyer, uh, <clears throat> you have mortgage, then the lender will ask you to purchase additional title, ins title insurance. Okay, we call uh, lender's policy. Okay, actually, that's uh, the, exactly the same as most of the insurance like a car insurance you have uh, <clears throat> if you do not have loan from the bank then you can purchase only uh, the liability but if you have a loan from the lender then the bank will ask you to purchase so-called full coverage or comprehensive it's the same thing okay you can consider this a liability this a full coverage Okay, then there's uh, some other money issues. For example, if there's a rent involved. Okay. Uh, seller will still receive the rent until the closing date. So any income generated after the closing date is belong to the buyer. Okay, next on closing day, it means the broker's commission will be debit or, or the, the check will be written out and <clears throat> for the broker's commission. And the commission and title for the commission on chapter two, we already talked about it. Uh, it's as a day of meeting of the, of the mind, MMM. Okay, which means the, the broker is entitled for the commission. However, the com commission won't be debited or the check won't be written out until the closing. Okay, so the last, for sure, the insurance binder. Uh, it has to provide it to the lender at the closing. Again, I'd like to mention about the binder. The binder is not the official policy, but uh, it is insur it cover insurance, okay? So in another word is, uh, before closing, you have to go, go to the in insurance office, local insurance office, to get a in homeowner insurance or so-called header insurance. However, you can call it a policy because it is a temporary. Okay. A policy won't be uh, uh, given out until the head office, the underwriting department approves it. So normally, <clears throat> Normally, the homeowner won't receive it until uh, probably 10 days or two weeks. They will receive by the ma by mail from the head office. That's a formal, they call 
uh, policy. Okay. So at the closing, most likely you only get it from local office, so we call a uh, binder. It's not a form formal policy yet. Okay, next, uh, if they of the title, okay, we, <coughs> we just mentioned about on the earlier page, the seller assured the title insurance company that there's no judgment, okay? I didn't file any of the bankruptcy or divorce, you know, of any kind. That's called F debit of title. Okay, next uh pay off statement. Uh, and mortgage reduction certificate satisfaction or mortgage. Those three were related to your loan, your mortgage. Okay, first, let's talk about satisfaction of mortgage first. Okay, in short, uh, even in the exam question, if actually uh, it is an exam question on uh, this year, the question is very simple. Uh, the question says, uh, once you pay off your loan, you know, uh, what documents should you have to uh, to record it and release your li liability? That's satisfaction of mortgage. Okay, once you pay off the lender, they should provide you satisfaction of mortgage. Okay. And this document, you can then go to record it to remove your mortgage, uh, remove the lien. Okay, in other cases for the lender, earlier we mentioned about the lender will sell uh, your promise note to the third party, which is a new lender. So the new lender is a signee. Okay. Once they sell your <coughs> uh, note, promissory note to this new lender, so this new lender become debtor now. So it's, they were required to execute the satisfaction of security instrument. Okay. <coughs> So you are no longer, uh, <clears throat> you are no longer uh, owe the debt to the original lender. Now, the assignee becomes the lender. Okay, so assignee release your liability from the previous lender. They give you satisfaction of mortgage. Okay, payoff statement is exactly the amount you know you need to pay on the closing date. We call payoff statement. Okay, in, in other words, seller. Okay, and the mortgage reduction certificate is a certified amount. Uh, if <clears throat> if the buyer want to assume the seller's uh, existing mortgage, okay. However, uh, <clears throat> in the old day, the the bank they may allow you to, we call, assume, assume the seller's mortgage. But now uh, <clears throat> it's not possible. Okay, now the lender, they won't let you do that. So,
Okay, that's uh, exam question. Uh, I talk about the document you get when you pay off the last payment. Okay, that's satisfaction of the mortgage. Okay, uh, page 49, we continue the next uh, escrow procedures. Okay, for the seller's side, seller has to deposit. Uh, most important thing is the D. Okay, a D which conveys transfer the property to the new owner. So, uh, in chapter five for the contract, the most important thing is the seller has to sign the D. Okay, that's very standard uh, question on the state exam. However, buyer do not have to sign the D. Okay, as long as there's a name. Of, I'm sorry, the buyer, you know, this, do not have to sign the D, okay, as long as you have a buyer's name on the D. Okay, next, uh, we have to provide title evidence. Uh, in general, there's a four title evidence. Uh, the, in the old day, there's, uh, we talk about <clears throat> today, the abstract title with attorney's opinion, which works fine and makes a good, strong title evidence. That's in the old days. And the next, the certificate of the title. Okay, certificate of title itself, uh, actually it does not count as strong title evidence. It's only a proof of that they've been uh, doing a <coughs> research, a search on the public record for the title. Okay, so, and next, title insurance. Okay, uh, in real life nowadays, the title insurance, I would say is the number one choice and most popular, uh, everyone goes through the title insurance. Although it is not a law, but uh, I would say you, you just have to get the title insurance nowadays for in order to close in uh, <coughs> your transaction. Okay, last one we call torrents. Uh, torrent certificate uh, is, on, <coughs> is on the East Coast. It's not for us in California or West Coast. Uh, the torrent certificate itself is a, a recording system for a nice and clean title. Okay, in other words, in torrent system, once you have torrent certificate, that means your title is nice and clear. Uh, so it works a little bit different from our uh, title recording system. So uh, again, like I say, uh, our county or city government, they doing the recording. They are not. Uh, <clears throat> they are not take the responsibility about how good the title is. Their main purpose is only make sure that you doing a recording. Okay. So that's that's uh, different from the torrents. So okay. Anyway. In short, in the <coughs> exam, 
if you see title insurance, I would say that's your number one choice. And most likely, it will be the uh, correct answer. If you don't see the title insurance, uh, I would say you, you're going to uh, <coughs> look for abstract title with attorney's opinions. Uh, I don't think you will select certificate of the title or torrents unless the question has come up except which of the following. Then you will select torrents or certificate of title because certificate of title itself uh, it is not a strong title evidence. Okay, then you need to provide, seller need to provide the header insurance or so-called homeowner insurance policy. Okay, uh, again, uh, most likely <coughs> it's not policy, uh, I'm sorry, existing one is a policy. Uh, buyer side, buyer would <coughs> just provide a homeowner or a fire uh, insurance uh, binder. Okay, then uh, you need a letter of uh, mortgage reduction certificate from the lender. And uh, you need to <coughs> give, a uh, seller need to give a uh, affidavit of the title. That means uh, you <coughs> you promised uh, you write it down that there's nothing happen uh, <coughs> during those days. Okay, the last one is the payoff sta statement. Uh, how much the seller has to pay off? Okay, the uh, next part is for buyer to deposit for. From buyer's side, the most important thing is the cash, balance of the cash the buyer has to provide. For the seller, most important is the deed to transfer. And then if you have mortgage, then you have to provide a loan document. Okay, then the lender will require the so-called header insurance Okay, or homeowner. Uh, <coughs> most likely, you only provide the uh, insurance binder. Okay, then uh, you also need to do inspection. Okay, that's the escrow procedure from the seller side or the buyer side. Okay, other than that, from broker's point of view, after MMM, the contract signed and open escrow, then it's uh, attorney takes over. It's not broker nor the salesperson's uh, responsibility, and uh, <clears throat> it's not our expertise either. It's not our profession. Okay. Our profession is before MMM. Okay. Back and forth of negotiation, find a right price, find a <coughs> good property. Okay. All those type of things. It's belong to our license. So from licensee, sales point of view, we should not provide any of the uh, advices or recommendation such as inspection service, survey, or title, or even uh, write down any of the terms regarding about the title. Okay, then uh, after closing, okay, the deal of trust, trustee must be recorded within one week by the broker. Okay. If there's no escrow in use, okay, 
In other words, nowadays most most likely it was it will be done by the escrow. Okay, and also uh, not only just recording. Also, uh, <clears throat> a broker need to notify the buyer about the sale price within one month. Uh, the same thing, uh, most likely, uh, we, it, it will be done by the escrow. Okay. Last one for the exam. Uh, you need to remember that in California, the Article 5 Business Professional Code, they, uh, <clears throat> they ask that the salesperson, we must uh, make sure that the deal of trust has been uh, conveyed and recorded. Okay. Uh, within 10 days. Okay, that's our responsibility. Okay, those two most likely is escrow's re responsibility or the broker. Uh, other than their responsibility, a licensee, we must, you know, within 10 days, we must make sure it is recorded. Okay, the the whole procedure we call settlement. The real estate transaction we call settlement. In California, most likely in the escrow. Okay, in New York, uh, it can be in the lenders or settlement agents or attorney's office.